James Webb results have surpassed all our expectations. Made up of a 6.5M gold-plated mirror, a sun shield the size of a tennis court, and an array of complex instruments cooled to temperatures only a few degrees above absolute zero, the Supreme Space Telescope observes the heavens in infrared radiation, revealing details of the universe just after its Big Bang birth 13.8 billion years ago. It also captures images of stars being born in dust clouds. Notably, in addition to collecting the faint light coming from the depths of the universe and probing the recesses of space-time, WED's infrared eyes also turn out to be ideal for studying strange and bizarre worlds. In a landmark observation, James Webb has focused on Proxima b, capturing the clearest image of our closest known exoplanet neighbor in history. Interestingly, what James Webb revealed is so much richer than anyone had hoped. Join us as we dig deep into what the James Webb Telescope just revealed. Mark it down, as of January 2024, we've passed a remarkable milestone in discovering the universe. For innumerable millennia, humans and our ancestors looked up at the sky, wondering at the seemingly limitless points of light glittering in the heavens. While many intuited that they might be similar to our sun, except located a tremendous distance away, nobody knew whether our solar system was something special. Did the other stars in the universe have planets orbiting them? If so, what percent of them had planets? How many did they have, and were the planets like ours, or vastly different? Just 30 years ago, humanity was beginning to uncover the answers as we started to discover planets in orbit around stars other than our own. At last, through a combination of multiple methods, the radial velocity method, timing measurements, the transit method, and gravitational microlensing, we are now well into a new era of astronomy where distant planets called exoplanets are being detected at a fast clip. At last count, there have been 5,057 confirmed discoveries of exoplanets and another 10,000 candidates awaiting confirmation. These exoplanets are truly amazing, each different, each with its own composition and history. There are no two worlds exactly alike. Even when astronomers refer to Earth-like or Neptune-like planets, they mean worlds with masses and radii similar to Earth or Neptune, not duplicates of Earth or Neptune. Enormous variability ensues as planets form, which dictates their chemical composition, geological activity, and atmospheres. So when discoveries point to worlds with chemicals related, even if superficially, to life, we pay attention. As is often the case, these discoveries have been tremendous and have answered some of our deepest questions about the cosmos. Nevertheless, even deeper ones now remain. Here's where James Webb enters. One of the main uses of the James Webb Space Telescope will be to study the atmospheres of exoplanets to search for the building blocks of life elsewhere in the universe. But Webb is an infrared telescope. How is this good for studying exoplanets? Frankly, one method Webb will use for studying exoplanets is the transit method, which means it will look for dimming of the light from a star as its planet passes between us and the star. Collaboration with ground-based telescopes can help us measure the mass of the planets via the radial velocity technique, that is, measuring the stellar wobble produced by the gravitational tug of a planet. Then Webb will do spectroscopy of the planet's atmosphere. Webb will also carry coronagraphs to enable direct imaging of exoplanets near bright stars. The image of an exoplanet would just be a spot, not a grand panorama, but by studying that spot, we can learn a great deal about it. That includes its color, differences between winter and summer, vegetation, rotation, and weather. How is this done? The answer again is spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is simply the science of measuring the intensity of light at different wavelengths. The graphical representations of these measurements are called spectra, and they are the key to unlocking the composition of exoplanet atmospheres. When a planet passes in front of a star, the starlight passes through the planet's atmosphere. If, for example, the planet has sodium in its atmosphere, the spectrum of the star added to that of the planet will have what we call an absorption line in the place in the spectra where we would expect to see sodium. This is because different elements and molecules absorb light at characteristic energies, and this is how we know where in a spectrum we might expect to see the signature of sodium, methane, or water if it is present. Why is an infrared telescope key to characterizing the atmospheres of these exoplanets? The benefit of making infrared observations is that it is at infrared wavelengths that molecules in the atmospheres of exoplanets have the largest number of spectral features. 
the ultimate goal, of course, is to find a planet with a similar atmosphere to that of Earth. In a great effort to hunt Earth 2.0, James Webb has turned its razor-sharp eyes on Proxima Centauri b. This mysterious planet has piqued the interest of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. At only four light-years away, Proxima Centauri b is our closest known exoplanet neighbor. Proxima b is a super-Earth exoplanet that orbits an M-type star. Its mass is 1.27 Earths. It takes 11.2 days to complete one orbit of its star and is 0.085 astronomical units from its star, in the habitable zone of its star Proxima Centauri. Proxima b encounters bouts of extreme ultraviolet radiation hundreds of times greater than Earth does from the Sun. That radiation generates enough energy to strip away not just the lightest molecules, hydrogen, but also, over time, heavier elements such as oxygen and nitrogen. Just because Proxima b's orbit is in the habitable zone, which is the distance from its host star where liquid water could pool on a planet's surface, doesn't mean it's habitable. It doesn't take into account, for example, whether water actually exists on the planet or whether an atmosphere could survive at that orbit. Atmospheres are also essential for life as we know it. Having the right atmosphere allows for climate regulation, the maintenance of a water-friendly surface pressure, shielding from hazardous space weather, and the housing of life's chemical building blocks. Notably, Proxima b is not the only exoplanet that caught James Webb's eyes. Several hundred are relatively close to Earth, and these are now ripe for study with the Webb telescope. WASPs 107b and its quartz clouds and the rogue worlds of the Orion Nebula have already been scrutinized, along with a host of other exoplanets. As a result, dozens of planet-sized objects have been discovered in the Orion Nebula via observations that could herald the existence of a new astronomical category. The free-floating entities, which have been named Jupiter Mass Binary Objects, or Jumbos, appear in spectacular images taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. The objects are too small to be stars but also defy the conventional definition of a planet because they are not in orbit around a parent star. The discovery also appears to confound existing theories of star and planetary formation, which suggest it should not be possible to form Jupiter-sized objects through the process that gives rise to stars inside the clouds of dust and gas found in a nebula. Professor Mark McCorian, a senior advisor for science and exploration at the European Space Agency, said the observations were inspired after data from ground-based telescopes hinted at the existence of this mysterious class of object. We were looking for these very small objects, and we find them. We find them down as small as one Jupiter mass, even half a Jupiter mass, floating freely, not attached to a star. Physics says you can't even make objects that small. We wanted to see if we could break physics, and I think we have, which is good. The large, hot, gassy objects appear to be planet-like in their composition, with analysis revealing steam and methane in their atmospheres, but they are not technically planets. The team settled on the name Jupiter mass binary objects because, out of the hundreds of planet-like objects identified, dozens came in pairs. The jumbos are about a million years old, babies in astronomical terms, and have infernal surface temperatures of roughly 1,000 degrees Celsius. Without a host star, though, they will rapidly cool and will briefly feature temperatures in the range of habitability before becoming incredibly cold. However, as gas giants, their surfaces would not harbor liquid water even during their brief temperate window, meaning they are not likely to be strong contenders for hosting alien life. The observations focused on the Orion Nebula, which can be seen with the naked eye as the fuzzy middle star in the sword of the Orion constellation. At 1,344 light-years away, it is the closest region of massive star formation to Earth. In the latest images, it appears as a celestial masterpiece with roiling clouds of dust and gas, explosions, and star beams. Stars form when the dust and gas clouds in a nebula cool, progressively fragment, and eventually collapse under their own gravity. The smallest stars are about 80 Jupiter masses, below which the core is not dense enough to fuse hydrogen. But smaller objects can coalesce through the same process, including dimly glowing brown dwarfs, sometimes called failed stars, and below about 13 Jupiter masses, planetary mass objects. But theoretical predictions suggest that the lower boundary for an object forming through a star-like gravitational collapse is about 3 to 7 Jupiter masses. Smaller, free-ranging objects have occasionally been sighted, 
but it was unclear whether they had formed in situ or had been ejected from a planetary disk around another star. The latest observations are more challenging to explain because out of the hundreds of roughly Jupiter-sized objects found, dozens are in binary pairs. How can you throw out two objects together? It's easier to imagine you make them as a pair, not that you make a planet in a disk and throw it out. Professor McCorian said the team was exploring other explanations, including whether they might have formed like planets around a star, only to be cast out into free space. He said the free-floating bodies could become a new class of objects, potentially creating a fresh, cosmic puzzle. The leading hypothesis for their origin is that a gas-rich core, which might eventually form a planetary system, can become unstable, fragment, and collapse into smaller clumps that might orbit the central star or be ejected into space. Professor McCorian says astronomers are only beginning to interpret the data. There's going to be a huge amount of work to do over the next few months, years, decades to figure out what we're looking at. We need a theory that explains this. Interestingly, the James Webb Space Telescope is set to unlock new mysteries about the universe. In a landmark revelation, the James Webb Space Telescope revealed that Proxima Centauri b harbors a vital chemical in its atmosphere that is often associated with biological processes. Notably, Proxima Centauri b's atmosphere contains trace amounts of methane and other organic molecules, a discovery that has sparked intense excitement and speculation among scientists. The presence of these molecules hints at the possibility of complex organic processes occurring on the planet, possibly indicating some form of biological activity. This is significant because, on Earth, methane is a gas that is commonly produced by living organisms, such as bacteria, in anaerobic environments. These findings suggest that Proxima Centauri b's atmosphere is not only complex but could potentially support conditions conducive to life. As scientists delve deeper into the data, the implications of this discovery could reshape our understanding of the potential for life beyond Earth. For instance, this could lead to further investigations into the planet's surface conditions, temperature, and potential water presence, all of which are crucial factors in determining its habitability. The James Webb Space Telescope's ability to detect such minute details in the atmospheres of distant planets marks a significant leap forward in our quest to find life beyond our solar system. The revelation of organic molecules on Proxima Centauri b brings us one step closer to answering the age-old question, are we alone in the universe? Furthermore, this discovery could pave the way for future missions to Proxima Centauri b, aiming to gather more detailed information and possibly even direct evidence of life. As we continue to explore the cosmos with advanced technologies like the James Webb Space Telescope, each new finding brings us closer to unlocking the secrets of the universe and our place within it. The confirmation of organic molecules on Proxima Centauri b marks a monumental milestone in our search for extraterrestrial life and sets the stage for an exciting new era of exploration and discovery.